Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Welcome to the Fairy Tale Mysteries Radio Show, classic tales told in a whole new way. Featuring Detective Betsy Hardup, the toughest private eye in Fairy Tale City. When Fairy Tale and Nursery Rhyme characters can't take their problems to the police, they come to her. There is a fog rolling in on the city. You feel a shiver of danger blowing on the breeze. And the stories that it tells aren't pretty, they're gritty. No pity but witty. They're the fairy tale mysteries. Things were looking brighter for Betsy and her ex, Ivan Charming, the chief of police. They had agreed to a date at the Haystack, a local jazz club run by Little Boy Blue, Betsy's favorite musician. It all fell apart when, after his first set, Little Boy Blue was found under the haystack, fast asleep. After being revived from a near-fatal poison apple overdose, Little Boy Blue fingered Betsy as the poisoner. The chief had to haul her downtown where Pinocchio, the almost human lie detector, cleared Betsy and agreed to help her find the real criminal. I was sitting in my office, staring out the window while I thought about Ivan. Actually, I was staring at a piece of cardboard that filled the place where my window should have been. I'd had to send one of my clients through it at the end of my last case. The repairmen were behind schedule. I was still steamed at Ivan for lying to me about who set me up to take the fall for poisoning Boy Blue. And he was steamed at me for sneaking Pinocchio in on our date without his knowing. He kept saying that the big bad wolf had nothing to do with this case. I knew it was a lie. Nearly every case I'd handled since I hung up my shingle had the wolf involved somehow. My detective instincts told me that he was the key. Plus, Pinocchio's nose had proven that Ivan was lying. What did he have to hide? Suddenly... It's open! Morning, Betsy! Have I got something for you! Ah, gee, pins! Sorry about stiffing you with the bill last night. Let me get some simoleons out of petty cash to pay you back. Thanks, Betsy. The lie detector business doesn't pay well enough for fancy drinks, especially when I didn't drink them. But that's not what I'm here for. Look! He took out a shiny apple with one bite removed. Feast your eyes on this! Then put it on my desk. A slightly used apple. Very thoughtful. It's the apple that poisoned Little Boy Blue. I borrowed it from the evidence room. Borrowed, eh? You're kind of crossing a line here, aren't you? I know, I know. My conscience was giving me grief. But if we can solve the case, it's worth breaking the rules a little. I figured this was the best way to find out who poisoned Blue. If we can find out what kind of chemicals are in this apple, we'll be a little closer to finding out who put them there. Say, that's a good plan. You know anybody who can analyze chemicals? Uh, no. Sorry. Well, it was a good plan up to that point. Hmm. Hey, I just might know somebody who can help us out. Who? An old friend of mine from an earlier life. Come with me. Our shop should be open by now. Wow, it's Antsville here. Look at this lineup. Yeah, excuse me. Looks like Aurora's apothecary shop is doing great business. I'll see if I can get us in. Now don't crowd, folks. There's plenty here for everyone. Oh, hello, Mr. Piper. Just put that peck of pickled peppers in the back. Good to see you, Jack and Jill. The vinegar and brown paper are on the second shelf over there. Hey! Hey, Aurora! It's me! Who's that? Why is that? It can't be! Ella, is that you? Yeah, it's me, Rory. And it's Betsy now. Oh, right. I heard that you split with Ivan. Such a shame. But I can dig why you left. I was in your shoes, too. Uh, Sorry, no offense. Sure, sure, I know. It's just a figure of speech. Well, I just mean that after I got woken up and married, I realized that my husband and I didn't have a whole lot in common. I mean, I'd been asleep for a hundred years. After that, I didn't just want to sit around the house. I wanted to do something with my life. That's why I opened the apothecary shop. 
I can help people with medicine and have something to do every day. Why don't you come in and have some coffee? I could use another cup myself. I'd like that. This is my friend, Pinocchio. Friend, huh? I get it. Come on in, the both of you. Your secret's safe with me. Pinocchio, this is my old friend Aurora. Pleased to meet you, Aurora. But there is no secret. Of course there isn't. And you can call me Rory. All my friends do. Rory led us through the crowd to her office in the back of the store. There, that's better. What do you take in your coffee? Black is fine. Nothing for me. It makes my hinges creak. Oh, I just love coffee. It keeps me awake. After you've slept as long as I have, being awake is very important. Now, what brings you here, El- I mean, Betsy. Show her pins. Can you tell us what kind of poison is on this apple? Hmm, I believe that is one of mine. Let me see. Yes, see the little Z on the stem? It's my work. We came to the right place. Who'd you make it for? Well, let me see. Hercules needed one, but that was golden, as I recall. Eden of Asgard has a standing order for three dozen every year, but they have a different spell. Oh, I remember. It was a fox. He was a little threadbare, but he had the cash. A fox? Did he have a one-eyed cat with him? <laughs> Why, yes, he did. I remember because I didn't have all the ingredients in stock. I had to do a special order, and the cat was very cagey about leaving an address. You know, to forward the items once they arrived. More coffee? No more for me, thanks. Do you have that address? Well, just pour myself another cup. And I do have the address, or at least the name of the business. It was called Wish Upon a Car. Some dealership in Timberlee run by a guy named Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket? I know that guy. Used to work for him. He let me go when business turned bad. I was glad of it, to tell the truth. To tell the truth. <laughs> Sorry, just a figure of speech. Well, if you know where the place is, then let's go check it out. Thanks for your help, Rory. This is a great lead. Glad I could help, Betsy. Come back and visit sometime when you don't have to rush off. It was lovely to see you. Want a coffee for the road? Thanks, no. Uh, I'll let you know how the case turns out. Say hi to Philippe for me when you see him. I certainly will, whenever that might be. I should get back to my customers. Take care. Mwah. Mwah. You too. Come on, Pins. Pins and I stood across the street from Wish Upon a Car. The lot was like a time machine with cars of all ages parked in rows. The oldest and cheapest were farthest out with the newest and fanciest closest to the low sales building. The entrance had big double glass doors with a little bell hanging over them. They had everything from a worn out Model A Ford to a shiny Chevy Corvette. We had waited until the dealership was closed. Pins didn't particularly want to meet his old boss again, and I figured he wouldn't come clean about poison deliveries. You see, Jiminy's really buggy. You mean he's kooky? Well, yeah, but he's actually a bug. A cricket, like his name says. He has this honest streak in him that won't let him lie or cheat anybody. Ouch. That's got to be rough on a used car dealer. You got it. I'm kind of surprised he still has the car lot. Just let me check under the welcome mat. Yep. See, he still has the key under there. That's not just honest, that's kind of naive. But it lets us in. Good work, Pins. We started casing the joint. I checked the front desk and file cabinet. Pins looked in the back. That's when he made the discovery. Hey, Betsy, come look at this. What'd you find? It's a room. Maybe a couple of rooms. These weren't here when I worked for Jiminy. It's full of costumes, all kinds of costumes. Wait a minute. I think I recognize some of them. You see this cape? That was Red Riding Hood's. And this bonnet belonged to a granny. And this gown looks real familiar. Isn't it the one you wore when the chief brought you in for questioning? Not exactly. This one is much too big for me. But it's the same fabric and style as my old ball gown. But I could never wear this. That's for sure. It's covered in dog hair. Look at it. There's fur all over it. Even inside it. Inside? Jumpin' Jack be nimble, that's not dog hair. It's not? What is it then? I think we just found out why the big bad wolf can dress up as so many other people. But that's a dress and he's a wolf. I mean, a wolf in a dress is still going to look like a wolf, isn't it? 
What kind of idiot would think that a wolf in a dress is a little old lady or something? This kind of idiot. There must be something more to it than just the costumes. You fooled a whole lot of people, cops included. What's that in your hand? Hmm? Oh, uh, it's an envelope. I found it in a drawer when you called me over here. I was just gonna open it. Looks like some kind of sparkly powder. It's pretty. <laughs> Don't touch it! That's pixie dust. A little of that in the wrong place and you could wind up on the moon. It can make you goofy? It can make you fly. Among other things. What's this stuff doing in a used car lot office? What's that noise? Sounds like someone's at the door. Uh, quick, step into the closet. Oh, but leave the door open a crack. Let me see. Hey, it's the chief. Shh. What's he doing here? Looks like he's doing what we just did, going through the files. Oh, my strings and hinges. What if he comes back here and finds us? Shh, don't flip your wig. He'll hear us. Is someone there? Too late. Well, well, well. Who do we have here? Betsy? What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question, Ivan. Is this normal police procedure? Rifling through files and searching a place of business without a warrant? How do you know I don't have a warrant? Do you have a warrant? No. Ha! I can get one. I just wanted to see if it was worth all the trouble before I went to all the trouble. Sure, sure. Makes perfect sense. Who else is here with you? Hi, Chief. Pins? Why? How? Wh what are you doing here? We found out that this is where the poison apple came from. We got the address from Betsy's friend and then came here to look for clues. That's the truth. Must be. Your nose didn't move. Fair is fair. I'll come clean too. I heard from a, uh, <clears throat> a contact of mine that our old friend the wolf is connected to this place. I thought I'd take a look around before I came back officially. You know, in case some evidence disappeared. Did you find anything? Nope. Did we ever? I mean, no. <laughs> Don't even bother, Pins. Your nose gives you away every time. Ah, darn it. Don't be too hard on yourself, kid. That one was my fault. So you did find something? Maybe we did. And maybe we didn't. Why should we tell you? Don't play games with me, Betsy. Maybe I like to play games. Feels good to have the upper hand once in a while. I know something you need and you can't do a thing about it. I could take you down for breaking and entering right now. Well, there is that. Shh! Listen! Someone's coming in! Quick, get in here! What is this room? Look at these costumes. Hey, this dress looks just like your... Shh! <laughs> All I'm saying is you promised me two bills for the costume rentals. Yeah, I'm good for it. Listen, my little spider friend. You gotta learn to be patient. I am not a spider. Crickets are insects, not arachnids. See? Six legs, not eight. That means I have three right hands, and I am raising all of them when I swear to you I need the money you owe me. And I'm going to have to charge you a cleaning fee. Do you know how hard it is to get wolf hair out of a ball gown? Ah, cry me a river, you little bug. You get your money when you get your money. You don't like it? Take it up with the mother. I can tell her about your problems. You think I should do that? The mother? No, no. I guess it's okay to wait for a little while. I'll come up with something. Yeah, I thought you might. Now get that ball gown ready. We're gonna need it for our next job. Plus, I like it. It makes me feel pretty. And relax. You're a connected guy now. You'll be fine. I'll be fine. Easy for him to say. He doesn't lie awake at night worried that he's doing the wrong thing. All this double dealing is hard on my nerves. If the law ever got me, I think I'd faint dead away. Jiminy Cricket, I'm Police Chief Ivan Charming. Ooh! What happened? He fainted dead away. He told the truth. Jiminy! Jiminy, wake up! Huh? What? Chief Charming! Stay with me, Jiminy. You're not in trouble. Well, not very much trouble. Oh, no! You can help yourself out of a hole here. Just tell us what's been going on. Us? 
What do you mean, us? Just play along. Let's see where this takes us. I mean, yes, us. We know you've been helping the wolf get disguises. Oh, how did it come to this? I was a car salesman, just trying to make an honest living. I can see how that would be difficult. That's the word from the bird. I felt terrible lying to people, so I told them exactly what the cars were worth. It wasn't long before I was way over my head in debt. I figured I'd get out of the car business. I wasn't very well suited for it. That's for sure. So I sold the lot to Motherhood Inc. They kept me on as manager. Motherhood? They had a finger in Granny's goodies pie. Literally and figuratively. At least you get most of your job. That was good. I thought so too. Till the job changed. Management decided to branch out into different businesses. Let me guess. Costume rentals? Among other things. So I had to schedule appointments, and organize shipments, and alterations, and laundry. Instead of being bad at one job, I was bad at four or five. Maybe you should find another line of work. What else can I do? If I try to leave, motherhood will come after me. Those people play rough. Who is motherhood anyway? I don't want to say. All I can tell you is that they're bad news. If they find out I talk to you, they'll squash me like a, well, bug. I'll be straight with you. You're in a tough spot. On the one hand, you're afraid that this motherhood will come down hard on you if you talk. But on the other, and I want you to listen to me now, on the other hand, if you don't talk, I have enough evidence to tie you into a couple of murder cases, not to mention fraud and grand larceny. What? What kind of evidence? The kind that can cause you lots of trouble. You bet your six little boots it is. In this side room here, we've got two outfits that we can connect to the Granny's Goodies fraud case and two attempted devourings. Plus, the ball gown that was worn by someone who tried to poison Little Boy Blue three days ago. Wouldn't be too much of a stretch to convince a jury that it was all your doing. But it wasn't me! Fine. We'll take a closer look around the place. Maybe we'll find something else. Like barbecue equipment used to roast a whole pig. Or maybe medical supplies to help a wolf recover from surgery. How did you know? I mean, that doesn't prove anything. Give it up, Jiminy. You're a terrible liar. You'll be much better off if you just tell us everything. And we have ways to get at the truth. <laughs> Are you gonna torture me? No! I mean, we have Pinocchio here. He'll repeat what you said, and if it's a lie, his nose will grow. What kind of police force do you think I run, anyway? Oh no! What should I do? Jiminy, remember what you told me years ago. Always let your conscience be your guide. Or oh, we could just charge you with murder and be done with it. I'm sure you'll do fine in the big house. After all, you're cute as a bug. The big bad wolf did it! And he's been using magic without a permit to make the disguises work! More unlicensed magic! Let's head downtown and you can make a statement. Ivan, hold up for a sec. Pins, can you take Jiminy here out to the car? We'll catch up with you. Sure, Betsy. Come on, Jiminy. <laughs> Am I under arrest? No. Not yet, anyway. We just need a statement from you. Hey, Ivan. I've been thinking. Oh, yes? About what? Well, we made kind of a good team back there. You know, with the whole good cop, bad cop routine. I guess we did. Although I never expected to be the good cop. But what are you saying? I just think it would be a shame to let that slide. We should keep working together. What would you say to that? I'd say that's a, a swell idea. I sure could see us together, you know, in the future. Just what I was thinking. Like, tomorrow night? I don't know what to say. Do you mean another date? Or something more? Definitely something more. See, I have some plans for what we could do together. Really? Oh, Betsy, you don't know how happy you've made me, how long I've wanted to hold you again. Hey, get your hands off me, you big palooka. I meant I have some plans to catch the big bad wolf red-handed. But I'll need your help. You in? Catch the wolf together? Uh, of course. <laughs> I knew that all along. Of course, I'm in. Great. Now come on over here and I'll tell you, but not too close. See, we'll need to get the Cricket's help. I figure you can put some pressure on him to get the wolf to come.
Pinocchio and I arrived at the Wish Upon a Car dealership a little after six. The sun was already down and there was a chill in the air. Winter was on its way. I pushed the dealership door open and we walked into the showroom. No need for sneaking in the back office this time. Ah! Oh, it's you. Sure it's us. You better calm down. Did the wolf take the bait? The bait? Oh, you mean is he coming over? Yeah, pretty soon. If you don't cool it, he's gonna know something's up. I know, I know. It's just that when I try to calm down, I think of why I'm trying to calm down, and then it makes me nervous all over again. Wow, cast an eyeball over these fancy cars. They've gotten real slick since I worked here. Uh, Pins, we're trying to solve a problem right now. Cars ain't really gonna help. Oh, my strings and hinges, it has a radio on board. Maybe that car can help. That's the ticket, Jiminy. Just sit back and let the music relax you. Breathe in and out. Okay, okay. <gasps> I think it's working. I feel better. Ah! Who's that? Hey, Chief, you made it. What's with the music? Is that Liberace? Hello, Ivan. We're just trying to calm Jiminy here down before Biggie gets here. I think his name is Big Bad Wolf. Sure, sure. Jiminy was getting the Zoros here. You know what they say, music hath charms to soothe the savage beast. Mm, personally, it's making me a little wild. Turn it off, will ya? You got it, Chief. How you feeling now, Mr. Jiminy? Better. Thanks, Betsy. I always have a secret weapon for the occasion. When's the wolf supposed to get here? Uh, any minute now. You better hide or he'll figure it out. Yeah, he's a pretty smart cookie. Remind me, what's the plan tonight? We went over this. Jiminy called the wolf over to talk money. The wolf and his goons owe him a lot of cabbage, so Jiminy's gonna tell them that they better pay or he won't play. What? Why then? <clears throat> I mean, uh, won't that make the wolf really mad? That's the idea, Chief. It was Betsy's idea, actually. When the wolf gets so mad that he threatens the result, Mr. Jiminy, we jump out and make the collar. That's a daddy re- <clears throat> uh, a genius plan. I remember it now. And she thought of that? Sure did. Well, we better hide then. Let's all sneak into one of the rooms at the back. It will be a little crowded at first, but I'm sure I can make room for you. <laughs> ah! It's the wolf! Sorry I'm late. There were a bunch of ugly ducklings crossing the road. Slow traffic for six blocks. Oh, it's just you again, Chief. Wait a minute. Again? There are two Chiefs? Why don't I feel double safe? Because one of them's an imposter. They can't both be, Ivan. One is more than enough. Yeah! But which one is the real Chief? Come on, Betsy. Don't you know me? It's me, your ever-loving honey pie. Okay, first of all, I would never call you that. Second of all, you are my wife. If you can't tell me from some imposter, nobody can. It's me. Ah, oh, cut the gas, Slim. It's as plain as the nose on your face. I am Ivan, Ivan Charming. Charming. No, you're not. I am. No, I am. No, I am. It was am. impossible to tell them no, apart. No, I but am. I knew we couldn't play this game for long. We had to choose. No, I'm Ivan and Charming. And fast. Betsy, he's right. Which one? Of course not. I'm Ivan Charming. You know that. You no, were no, 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 his no, wife. I'm Isn't Ivan there Charming. some way to tell them apart? I tell you, I'm Ivan Charming. The only way I could think of was true love's kiss. Ivan's kiss would always make me weak at the knees. It's the main reason I'd been avoiding it for so long. Where's your secret weapon for this, Betsy? Ridiculous. I'm Ivan Charming. We've already gone through this. I am Ivan Charming. I'm uh. Ivan Charming. Uh-uh. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna have to kiss him. I am. I'm Ivan Charming. Uh-huh. Wait, what's happening to your nose, Pins? I got it. I know who the real Ivan is. You're the secret weapon. It's that one. Get him, guys. You lousy cops. Let go of me. Oh, no! He's getting away! Get back here! <laughs> See you around, suckers! <laughs> oh! 
Just as the wolf made it out of the showroom door, Crumpet and Croissant appeared. Monsieur Lalou, you are under arrest. You've been waiting a long time to say that again. Get the cuffs on him, Croissant. He's not getting away this time. Curse you, rotten coppers. You ain't got nothing on me. Nothing's I tell you. Tell it to the judge. Ah, contraire, monsieur. We have witnesses who saw you escape from the hospital. There are costumes that prove you impersonated a grandmother, a young woman, and an officer of the law. There is also strong circumstantial evidence to show that you roasted the eldest of those three little pigs. Well, well, well. What have we here? Look what I found in his pocket. A tiny envelope filled with pixie dust. Must be two grams of it in here. So it looks like we've got quite a lot on you, actually. You're not wriggling out of this one, Biggie. Don't call me that! Button it, Biggie. You're coming to the station. You are charged with fraud, fleeing custody, homicide, swine aside, gingerbread aside, and the unauthorized use of magic. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will be used against you. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Are you sure he won't get out? The charges against him, the big bad wolf, won't even be granted bail. You're safe. Thanks for helping us out with this. My conscience is stronger than my nerves, I guess. Which makes me very nervous. Good work, Pins. If you hadn't have figured out who the real Ivan was, I could have been in big trouble. Because the wolf could have eaten us all? Because I could have had to kiss them both. I was sitting in my office, staring out my window and thinking about the big bad wolf. The window repairman had moved my appointment up a week and had just finished replacing the glass. Word had gotten out that I was the one who helped put the big bad wolf behind bars. I wondered if my business would slow down now that he wasn't around here to run his crime syndicate. But I figured there'd still be plenty of work for me. There were always problems here in Fairy Tale City. I heard that Jack Spratt and his wife weren't seen eye to eye, and little Bo Peep was always losing a sheep. The school board had even contacted me about checking up on the old woman who lived in the shoe. All that was in the future. Right now, I had my new assistant, Pinocchio, to keep me honest. And Ivan and I were back on speaking terms. Things were good. I could allow myself to relax a little, knowing that I would be fine, and the streets of Fairy Tale City were just a little bit safer. <laughs> And so we leave Betsy, gazing at the world through her new window, seeing a comfortable future for herself and Pinocchio, and maybe Prince Ivan, too. Of course, she seems to have forgotten a few loose ends, like who was behind Motherhood, Inc.? And what do they have on Jiminy Cricket? Will that come back to haunt her? Find out as this season of the Fairy Tale Mysteries radio show magically unfolds. To Tell the Truth Part 2 was performed by Franny Warwick as Betsy Harda, Ruby Day as Pinocchio, Melanie Mercer as Aurora, Jen Tiles as Jiminy Cricket, Rob Dunn as the Big Bad Wolf, Samantha Andrews as Officer Crumpet, Jeff Christensen as Officer Croissant, Dan Wilhelm as Prince Ivan Charming. Hello, I'm your announcer, Christopher Hall. To Tell the Truth Part 2 was written by Mike Balzer and Hannah Christensen, based on a concept by Alex Balzer. Directed by Mike Balzer. Music by Timothy Tucker. Vocals by Chelsea Rose. Sound effects and foley by Chris Cutris. Costumes? Yes, we do have costumes in radio, and they are by our dream team, Judy Simpson, Linda O'Donovan, and Chris Roberts. The Fairy Tale Mysteries Radio Show is produced by James T. Nelson and is a COVID fund project from the Fraser Valley Gilbert and Sullivan Society. This season of the Fairy Tale Mysteries Radio Show has been made possible by the generous financial support of Metro Vancouver. Thank you. All rights reserved. Stop. Sit. Stay. Bad dog. 
Oh, oh, he's biting me. Stop it. <laughs> Bad. Good morning. We hope you're enjoying Saturday's Story Circle. Got enough cereal? How's the coloring going? You can always join us tomorrow on Mutual with the Sunday Showcase. Original audio drama from the United Artists of Audio right here on Mutual. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for exciting audio drama every day. Or find the Sunday Showcase feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.